Hello everyone, my name is Evo and welcome to Cooking with the Koyas. You know, growing up as a child, my mother always made potato bread. It was a staple. Nowadays, it's a specialty item. It's an artisan bread. And you know what? It is not hard to make. In fact, it's very, very easy. I'm gonna show you how simple it is. Yes, you can do it. You can start it and, and you make it same day. You can start it nine o'clock in the morning and you'll have fresh loaf of bread before five o'clock in time for dinner. Let's get started. Okay, so what we have here are 500 grams of all-purpose flour. I like to use unbleached white flour. Try to get one with a high protein content, like over 13%. You know, the flour that's made for bread. That's the best, of course. And what we are gonna use are 200 grams of mashed potato. And I like to use a potato rush ricer when I'm mashing my potatoes. If you don't have one, they're really handy. I highly recommend them, they're great. And to our mashed potato, so we have 200 grams of mashed potato, we need to just season them a bit with some salt. So we're gonna add a quarter teaspoon of salt to our mashed potato. And then, quite simply, we're gonna add our mashed potato and mix it in with the flour. Okay. So just with your hand, just kind of work it in. You're not really kneading or anything here. You're just, you're just mixing it in together, that's all. Okay, so, and if you have clumps of potato, you can just break up the clumps with your hand. Okay, the important thing is you just want to mix the potato with the flour. Now, once that's done, I have 250 milliliters, which is equivalent to one cup of water, but not just any water, potato water. When you boil your potato, folks, don't throw away that potato water. That potato water is full of nutrients um, and you can use that potato water to add extra flavor and more, ingre and more uh, nutrition to your potato bread. That is one of the keys to a fantastic potato bread right there is using potato water. Now, if of course you forgot to keep your potato water, by all means, 250 grams of regular water will work just fine as well. Okay, so I've got those ingredients all in together and all we're gonna do here is just mix them till they're just incorporated. It's gonna be a bit dry and that's fine. And we're just gonna mix these together. And once they're mixed, we're gonna let them sit I'm going to cover it and we're going to let it sit for about 20 to 30 minutes. So it's called an auto lays method. So we're going to do that right now. There we go. There, everything is just incorporated. You can also, if you want, work it a bit with your hands just to pick up most of that loose flour. But basically you just want to incorporate and let it sit. So a little bit more and then we can get the rest of that, that later. Okay, I want to pick up just a bit more of that loose flour. Okay, there we go. We got a nice shaggy mess there, right? That's it. Okay, so I'm going to cover it up now and we're going to let it sit for oh, 20 to 30 minutes and then we'll come back to it. So it's been about a half an hour and it's been resting very nicely. So what we can do now, and you can see our dough is starting to get a little bit stickier. Um, we're gonna add 11 grams of salt. Now I use fine sea salt. You could use regular table salt. It's not a problem. So I've got 11 grams of salt that I'm gonna add to the dough. And that is equivalent to about a, just a heaping one and a half teaspoons, heaping one and a half teaspoon. And I'm going to fold the salt over and now what I'm gonna do is add my yeast and this is about um, it's a half a teaspoon of instant yeast so if you're weighing it's two grams of instant yeast you could use other yeast as well but if you do your other yeast just make sure you follow the instructions for getting that yeast started but in this case we've got uh, the yeast and the salt kind of separate but now we have to basically work this dough and get everything incorporated together. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna wet my hand just a little bit 
Um, it's going to stick anyhow, but fold it over and then use what they call the pincer meth method. You see here, you just kind of make it into a log shape, the dough, and then grab and squeeze and work your way and just continue to squeeze together. Basically, all you want to do here is make sure that we are evenly uh, distributing that salt and the yeast into the dough and we're also working the dough so it's uh, accomplishing a few things so you can keep working this for I would say two a good two to three minutes just to make sure everything is incorporated and as you can see you're, it's gonna stick a little bit to your hands and th that's okay that's fine um, and make sure you get all the flour and I'm just going to continue doing this for about, oh, another minute or so. Okay, that should do it. The dough now feels much smoother. Uh, and if, as you're doing this, if you feel any clumps, by all means, work them in. Okay, and now you've got more of a nice, smooth, incorporated dough. And you can see how it's sticking. Okay, again, that's not a problem. And I should have mentioned also regarding the mashed potato. Uh, this is actually kind of important to make sure that the mashed potato is room temp or cold when you add it, when you start this. If you take a, a really, really hot mashed potato and start to mix, you're going to make more of a goo. So please make sure you use room temp mashed potato or cool. All right. Now that that's done, uh, quite simply, we're going to do what's called a fourfold. So the dough is basically ready. So I'm going to just grab one end, fold it over, grab the other end, fold it over, grab the other end, fold it over, and then the other end and just fold it over. All right. Now that I've done those folds, take a little bit of this dough off my hands there we go now this can sit and within the hour we have to do two more of those folds so in another 20 20 to 30 minutes we'll come back do a four fold wait another 20 or 30 minutes and do another four fold and then it can sit so let's just do that right now let's just cover it up we'll come back in about no oh, 20 20 to 30 minutes okay a half hour has now passed our dough has been resting very, very nicely. Again, I'm going to just dampen my hand just, just a little bit, just to get a little bit of water on there. And we're going to do the fold again. So just grab one end and fold it over. Grab another end, fold it over. Same thing here, fold. And the dough is rather, is rather stiff. And, and again, that's fine. You can see how stiff it is. And you could do this. I like to go around at least twice, so let's call it eight folds. And just fold it over. That's gonna get the glutens going. Okay, if you wanna do an extra one or two, feel free to do that, that's fine. All right, there we go. All right, I'll just leave it into a nice round shape. And we're gonna let that sit again for another 20 to 30 minutes. Another half hour has passed, and another fold. Again, I'm just gonna dampen my hand just a bit and you can see the dough is settling down nicely and then do the fold just grab one end fold it over turn it around grab the other end fold it over very very simple process grab the other end fold it over take this end here stretch it a bit fold it over and again i'm going to do that I'm going to go around about eight to ten times. Get those glutens working. Okay, there we go. Maybe one more for good measure. Okay, done. Now that that's done, quite simply, this dough needs a little rest. And it's going to rest for about five hours. Um, it is going to more, more than double in size it should actually triple in size so i'm going to put it in my container here with the lid 
and now we just let it rest. So we're going to let it rest and we'll revisit it in five hours. I've got plenty of time now to go run some errands and take care of some odds and sods. So fast forward five hours and our dough has come along really, really nicely. I'm not sure if you can see or not, but there's a nice bubble there on that side and it's bubbling up on this side as well but it's risen very, very nicely. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna shape our dough. Out it comes onto a lightly floured clean surface. Okay, look at that beautiful dough, folks. Boy, oh boy. And you get a nice aroma too when, it, uh, when you open up. Okay, so I'm just going to use the spatula and that's gonna help me get this dough out of this container. Nice and gently getting that out of here. Oh yeah, very nice aroma to this dough. Beautiful. All right, and out it comes. Okay, so uh, I am going to, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna shape the dough, and to shape it, it's very, very easily done. A Little bit of flour on the hands. We're gonna do another one of those four folds, just a gentle four fold. One, two, three, and four. Now to shape this dough, just turn it upside down and begin to put it into a round. And then quite simply, the best way I can explain it, I'm gonna grab it from behind and I'm gonna pull it towards me. And when I do, it's gonna grip here. There's no flour here, so it's gonna grip and it's gonna roll forward. So. Just roll it forward and it'll start to tighten up. Turn it around, grab it from the back. Again, pull it towards you about, oh, four or five inches. Turn it around, grab it from the back, pull it towards you. And you're gonna do this until it tightens up and forms a nice round ball. Try not to get it too tight where you're gonna lose those beautiful air pockets. Okay, there we go. Maybe we'll do one more here and one more. Okay. If you notice the surface, the skin starting to tear apart, that's, uh, then you've gone a little bit too far. That's quite enough. Okay. So this is now ready to be proofed and I'm going to proof it in this, um, bread proofing basket. And what I'm going to do with this basket is you could put a little bit of flour in here. I'm going to use semolina flour and I'm going to sprinkle this semolina flour throughout this entire basket and that will simply help prevent our beautiful bread dough from sticking. Okay, so these also come with a, with a cloth that you could put on the inside as well, but I like, I like these little ridges to show up on my bread, so I like to do it this way. These are not expensive either. They're worth buying if you don't have any. They're fantastic for, uh, for bread making. Okay, and a little bit extra on the bottom there. So I've got that covered pretty, pretty good. So now I just take my beautiful potato dough bread. There we go. I can take a little bit of flour on top. Alrighty, and again, we're gonna cover that up. So this now needs to proof for an hour and 15 minutes. That's it. So that means in 45 minutes, I'm gonna preheat the oven. So we're gonna let it rest, 45 minutes, we'll get the oven going. So our 45 minutes have passed, our bread is resting and rising nicely in its basket. And if you don't have a basket, I'd like to mention, you could just use a plastic cutting board. Uh, put down some, uh, I like to put down some oatmeal so the dough doesn't stick, and then just cover it. Okay, so time to fire up the oven. And in the oven, I'm gonna put this Dutch oven. It's empty, we're gonna preheat the oven, and we're gonna preheat the Dutch oven at the same time. So, in goes the Dutch oven. And we're gonna fire the oven up to 475 degrees. Okay, 475, 
And now what has to happen is we're just going to preheat that oven for 30 minutes. So after 30 minutes, the bread's going to go in. So our half hour has passed. Time to get that Dutch oven out and get our bread dough into the oven. Okay, I'll we'll just close that down. This is nice and heavy. So this Dutch oven is very, very hot. So we're going to be very careful with that. So off comes the lid. Okay. Oh, and look at that beautiful bread dough right there. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is basically we're going to dump it into our Dutch oven very uh, carefully. And I've got, as you can see, nothing is, st is sticking. And put it right in there. Now, if you have a bread lane, you can slice with your bread lane. If you don't, a pair of scissors is perfectly fine. And just go in about a, you know, about a quarter inch. So make a line about a quarter inch deep. And I like to do three lines. This will help allow the bread to rise and add a little bit of character. Okay, so lid goes back on. There we go. And this is now going to go into the back into the oven, and it has to cook for 30 minutes with the lid on. In goes our bread. Now it's time to start our 30 minute time. It's been 30 minutes. Time to take a look at our bread and take the lid off. Oh yeah, take a look at that. It's just starting to brown up nicely, just a very, very light brown color. It's got a beautiful shape and rise to it. Okay, so now we take the lid off and we're going to bake this for another at least 15 minutes. Now everyone's oven will be different, but we're going to leave it for 15 minutes and then we'll check it out and see the coloration and if it's where it needs to be. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. Oh, that's a beautiful color, but I like it just a touch darker. Two more minutes. It is now time to take another look. Okay, you know what? I better stop there. Laura doesn't like her bread really, really dark. I like mine a little bit darker, but you know what? That is perfect. Look at that. Oh my goodness. And if you could smell the aromas in this kitchen right now, it is nothing short of spectacular. Look at there. Just take a look at this beautiful potato bread right here. Isn't that, that is perfect. It's cooked perfectly. Now what's the bottom look like? Oh yeah, that to me is bang on. That's what I want to see, a little bit of color. Not burnt, but color. And that's got some nice rise to it. What a beautiful, beautiful look at the top there from the cuts that we made, allowing this bread to rise. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, so now comes the patient part. We're going to put it down. And what we're going to do, folks, is we're going to wait. We're going to let that bread cool down. You have to avoid the temptation to cut into that bread right away. It's still cooking. The crust is still developing and the crumb on the inside is still developing and you're going to hear it starting to crackle over the next 5-10 minutes because it's still, like I say, it's still cooking. So we're going to let this cool down. I'm anxious to cut in and do the sample, do the taste test and I want to show you what the interior, what the crust and the crumb look like. Oh, a little bit of patience, that's all. Okay, I'm going to sign off just for well, at least 30 minutes. I'm going to let this cool for a bit, but we'll be right back. So it's been at least an hour, more than an hour. I've been very, very patient. But honestly, folks, take a look at this bread. Isn't this a potato bread that you would expect to find in a specialty shop somewhere and probably pay a lot of money for? And you know what? You can easily make this potato bread right in your own kitchen, same day, just like we did today. Let's take a cut into this bread and see what it looks like on the inside. Cutting board is ready, knife in hand. Let's take a look. Oh, it sounds good already. Oh, yes. Take a look inside there. We have got a beautiful, beautiful crust on the bottom and the top. And look at the crumb. Nice airy crumb here. 
Oh, and it's that potatoey soft. Oh my goodness, this spread is going to be nothing short of spectacular. Yes, folks, this is everything you would want in a potato bread right here. Oh my goodness, it really doesn't get much better than that right there. Absolutely beautiful, and what's going to be even more beautiful is the taste test. Look at this piece, oh my. I should get some fresh olive oil is what I should get, but let's take a bite right into it just as is. Oh yeah. Exactly what you would expect. The crumb is nice and soft, got a beautiful texture to it, nice spring, and the crust, thick and crunchy. Absolutely delicious, what a great specialty bread. So I'll tell you what, no matter what you want to do, you want to slice this potato bread and have it fresh with toast in the morning, or cut a couple of slices, make yourself a nice sandwich at lunchtime, won't get any better than that. Better yet, some nice fresh potato bread with your pasta dinner, doesn't get better than that either. Whatever you decide to do, I hope you decide to do one thing, and that is to give this recipe a try and make this fantastic potato bread for yourself, for your family, for your friends, whatever the case may be. But I hope you give it a try and I hope you enjoy it. I know I am. And I want to thank you for joining me on today's episode of Cooking with the Koyas. And until next time, bon appetito.